Hello everyone, this is Julie from the Yuma Main Library. The cold weather is here and it is the perfect time to enjoy a sweet and delicious cup of hot chocolate. But have you ever wondered where our favorite wintertime drink came from? Well today I want to share the fascinating history of America's most comforting holiday drink. The history of hot chocolate can be traced back to the civilizations of ancient Mesoamerica, which is presently Mexico and Central America. The word chocolate comes from the Nahua word chocolate, meaning bitter water or drink. The Olmecs of southern Mexico were the first to domesticate the cacao plant and grind cacao beans for drinks as early as 1500 BC. For the Olmecs, Mayans, Mexica, more commonly known as the Aztecs, and other Mesoamerican civilizations, the cacao tree and its fruit held strong cultural, spiritual, and economic significance. Many ancient Mayan artifacts depict iconography of cacao offerings between gods and humans, signifying the sacredness of the fruit. Viewed as a first tree by the Mesoamerican cultures, the cacao tree came to be viewed as a tree of life and the link between the natural and spiritual world. For the Olmec civilization, the drink made from the cacao beans fulfilled mostly a religious purpose. It was mainly consumed as a sacred drink during religious or spiritual rituals and as an offering to the gods. The chocolate drink consumed by the Mayans was served as a warm, frothy drink and made by crushing cacao beans and mixing them with chili peppers and water. The Mayans believed chocolate was a gift to humans from the gods and should be shared with everyone, so anyone in the Mayan civilization could enjoy the beverage regardless of social standing. However, it was also consumed for religious rituals and special occasions, such as weddings and births. The Mexica learned about the value of cacao from the Mayans and adopted the same reverence for it as a gift from the gods. However, since the Mexica did not grow their own cacao beans, they placed a higher value on the chocolate drink. Only the wealthy royalty and high priests were able to drink it. Moctezuma, the ruler of the Aztec Empire, revered the chocolate drink so much that he would drink the spicy chocolate beverage 50 times a day and would only allow those who went to battle to drink it. The Mexica believed in the healing and re-energizing powers of chocolate, so warriors would drink the beverage before going to battle because they believed it would give them increased strength and courage. As the quote on the slide indicates, the Spanish conquistadores witnessed how the Mexica would use the drink as a restorative and filling drink. The Mexica chocolate drink followed the same preparation process as the Mayans. However, it was served cold. The most important part of the drink was its frothy quality, which was achieved by pouring the drink rapidly between two cups like the image in the middle of the slide demonstrates. The ancient civilizations of Mesoamerica so highly valued cacao beans that they used the beans as currency. Neighboring civilizations to the Mayans would establish trade with the Mayans to obtain the precious cacao beans. Since the Mexica could not grow the cacao tree in the capital city of Tenochtitlan, cacao beans could only be acquired through trade. The beans eventually became the Mexica's primary currency. The Mexica would even demand the cacao beans as tributes from military conquest. Moctezuma would eventually present Hernán Cortés and his army with goblets of the chocolate drink during their first encounter. The Spanish conquistadores were fascinated by the chocolate drink, and cacao beans were one of the many riches they took back to Spain after invading Mesoamerica. Spain was the first European country to enjoy chocolate, primarily as a drink like the indigenous people of Mesoamerica. In Spain, the chocolate drink was mostly available and enjoyed by the Spanish royalty and nobility. However, they changed the recipe that Hernán Cortés had taken from the Mexica to make it more palatable to their tastes. The Spanish enjoyed the drink warm with fewer spices and added sugar and vanilla. The chocolate eventually did spread the to the rest of Europe, with each country changing the recipe to their liking. Hot chocolate became so popular that chocolate houses popped up all over London and other European cities in the late 17th century. Chocolate houses were the place wealthy, prominent male members of London society would meet to discuss politics, business, or the arts, and engage in playing cards, dice, or gambling, all while enjoying a hot cup of hot chocolate as shown in the image at the bottom left. However, these establishments were famous for attracting a rowdy crowd where gambling disputes might get out of hand and fights could break out. These chocolate houses would become the precursors to London's popular gentlemen's clubs, such as the image on the far right shows. Hot chocolate was also a common drink during colonial times that was usually served during breakfast. During the Revolutionary War, medics would give the beverage to wounded, sick, or tired soldiers to help with their recoveries, and it was included in the military rations given to the soldiers. It also became a popular drink among some of our founding fathers. This quote by Thomas Jefferson demonstrates how highly he viewed the chocolate drink, stating that he believed it would surpass coffee and tea in popularity, and Ben Franklin sold it out of his print shop. The restorative qualities of chocolate that the ancient civilizations of Mesoamerica praised and revered continue to be a selling point for hot chocolate. Hot cocoa was a staple on all North and South Pole expeditions. 
Robert Falcon Scott had his crew on the ill-fated attempt to be the first to reach the South Pole drink hot cocoa five nights a week for warmth, nutrients, and an energy boost for the weary explorers. During World War I and World War II, hot cocoa remained a source of sustenance and comfort for American soldiers. Volunteers with the YMCA set up recovery stations near battlefields like the one in the bottom right image where fatigued soldiers could rest, grab food, or a cup of hot chocolate. The volunteers would even go into the trenches demonstrated in the bottom middle image to serve soldiers cups of hot chocolate. Hot chocolate and other chocolate drinks continue to be advertised as a sort of energy drink during the rest of the 20th century. These are some vintage ads that were used to sell various brands of chocolate drinks like Ovaltine, Quick, and Yoohoo. Hot chocolate was advertised as a nourishing drink that could be consumed before and after a game. Yogi Berra and Mickey Mantle of the Yankees were spokespersons for Yoohoo chocolate drink. And Ovaltine advertised that drinking a cup of hot chocolate before bed would help with the restful sleep and provide you with the nutrients to wake up energized and refreshed the next morning. Nowadays, hot chocolate and hot cocoa are the quintessential drinks for the holidays. It is the perfect drink to warm up with on a chilly winter day. However, while the terms hot chocolate and hot cocoa are used interchangeably, there is actually a difference between the two. What most Americans will call hot chocolate is actually hot cocoa. Hot cocoa is made using cocoa powder, hot water, or milk, and sugar, making it a lighter and sweeter drink. Hot chocolate, also known as drinking chocolate, is made with shaved chocolate so that it melts quickly in hot water, milk, or cream. This results in a richer and thicker drink. Countries around the world have different versions of our favorite holiday drink. In the Philippines, there is chocolate, which is made from blocks of cocoa known as tablea and has a grainy texture and rich taste. The traditional holiday drink in Mexico is champurrado, and what makes this cocoa so unique is the use of corn flour that gives it a chunky texture. In Italy, the chocolate calda has such a thick consistency that you need a spoon to eat it. The addition of cornstarch creates this thick and creamy texture, and in Colombia, the addition of cheese makes this chocolate drink one of a kind. If all this talk of hot cocoa has made you crave your own sweet cup of chocolatey goodness, then check out our new online resource, A to Z Food America, to find some hot chocolate and hot cocoa recipes. You can find A to Z Food America on the library's resource page at yumalibrary.org. You can also check out some recipe books from the library or on Hoopla. These are some titles that are currently available in our collection. Thank you for joining us for today's virtual programming, and I hope you enjoy your own cup of hot cocoa.